Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part 7 of Kerbal Spaceships, our serious business. We have been making a bunch of upgrades, but more importantly, we have a new version of the Aquador, which has improved reaction control systems. Why are we doing this? It's because we think there are still speed records within our grasp with this ancient technology, with this aging technology, let's say. But Arkady Simmerman... He sees only the challenges of uh, the skies ahead of him. Something like that. He's bold. He's just like, let's get in there and go as fast as possible. So the plan is now we have adjusted it to balance the center of mass a little better. And now we're going to head out over the, over the continental U.S., and in space, we're going to try and go as fast as possible. We've stretched that initial stage to go as fast as possible, and... Something got messed up with the with whatever mod controls the different launch sites because suddenly this is rotated by about, you know, 180 degrees. Regardless, we're just going to take advantage of this thing and off it goes. So, nothing to see here. We've seen this before. I make some changes to the control surfaces here. We've also changed it to use an all-moving uh, tailplane, or at least the uh, the elevators on the rear are now using proper all-moving controls so that they will be a little more responsive at high speeds. I'm just hoping that that will give me a little more strength, a little more ability to pitch up because the danger with this thing is you end up going far too fast in a dive towards the ground. Now, uh, we're getting high, we've got over 130 kilometers. So I, I can throttle this down a little and bring the nose down. If we can keep the engine running, that will be great. So we just want to keep that engine just idling along, pushing us faster and faster here. We can't throttle it up too much because what's going to happen is we start to pitch up. But even then, as the spacecraft masses less and less, it pitches up more and more. So we cut the engine for a little while. We've pushed our lateral velocity up to about 800 or 900 meters per second. This will actually help us. Previously, we went straight up and straight down. We had to pull those horrific looking tumble maneuvers to make sure we slowed down fast enough because if you're going in a vertical dive, it's not gonna help you. In this case, we're gonna go in a 45 degree dive. It looks like we're going in a 45 degree dive and I'm trying to keep the nose up again, just trying to pick up lateral speed here. Our, our lateral speed is going up and that's us past 900 meters per second. We're gonna keep going faster and faster hoping to get this thing past 1500 meters per second. 1500 meters per second, that is crazy. That's like the kind of speed the X-15 managed. Never mind an X-1 using an X-1 engine. Obviously powered by a Soviet rocket engine. Okay, now the atmosphere is starting to grab us and giving us roll again. Still, we tried moving the those uh, engines, those uh, reaction control thrusters to give me roll control. Didn't work, but we'll go back to the drawing board or possibly just scrap this thing completely because really we are pushing this thing to the limit. Our speed is about 1600 meters per second, which is pretty crazy, but it's still a long way, a bit, quite a bit shy of what the X-15 managed in level flight. There, come on, 18, 1800 meters per second. 2,000 meters per second, roughly, is what the X-15 could manage. And now, now we are starting to really get in trouble here. I am pitching up as hard as possible, and this thing is not coming out of this dive. I was hoping the torque from that engine would actually help me, but now, now I'm slowing down. Things are catching fire. 20 kilometers, 20 kilometers, and we are pitching very slowly, very slowly. I hope we can come out of this dive. I think, I'm just wondering, at what point does this engine become a liability? Let's try, let's try adjusting my control surfaces. Ah, look at that, you see? Adjusting that, and now we're coming out of this dive. We've slowed down to about Mach 1.5, but we at no point needed to 
extinguish that engine. Also note that the rear of this vehicle is actually glowing from the heat of the re-entry. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Either that or it's growing hot from the rocket engine attached to it. What's probably happening realistically is that that rocket engine is passing the heat forward. So the rear section of the fuselage is the part that is cooling down most slowly. Anyway, having broken speed records, Arcady shows, uh, well, finally gets to test the new parachute system. Very important that this thing gets test tested before we actually put a person in it. Unfortunately, we didn't have the money or time or spare parachutes, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, we just decided to trust to the mathematics, hoping that it would work. Kind of like the space shuttle. I mean, the space shuttle, they didn't fly any unmanned tests of that off the full orbiter stack. No, they just hoped that it would work. And as it happened, it did work for a while. But with that landing, I think it really is time to retire this Red Wing X1, whatever. We, we really can't go any higher or faster with this. It's going to tear itself apart and disintegrate. If we're going to go faster, we're going to have to build something more appropriate for the task. Regardless, we get a bit of science and we get a bit of reputation, some funds and maybe some experience. Who knows? Anyway, moving swiftly on, indeed moving to a more equatorial launch site, which gives us a swifter launch. This is a French launch site, uh, basically in South America. We are going to launch this from this because it is closest to the equator and we want to get as much speed as possible. We're going to use this with a new launch vehicle or... We're basically building out the biggest and fastest launch vehicle we can, hoping to send a spacecraft up to above geostationary orbit, up into high space. All the space data we have collected has been from low space. This is it. This is our rocket. We call it the Icarus 2, since the previous spacecraft was called the Icarus. We have cut down the battery capabilities on this, but... Uh, Beyond that, we've we've also added some external boosters to help get it through the the launch process, and then hopefully this thing will carry it into space and then carry it up as to much much higher altitudes than we have previously attained. Hopefully, it doesn't live up to its namesake and then come crashing back into the ocean when its feathers melt. We've made, in fact we've made sure that we're not using any feathers on this for that exact purpose. What a beautiful day for a rocket launch. What a beautiful day for a giant, huge, epic rocket launch, which is going to go higher and faster than any before it. We're getting ready. We are going to launch directly towards the 90 degree vector here. And, uh, yeah, okay, make sure our fuel pumps are all turned on. Oh, that fuel pump is not enabled. Oh, we've only got it on one side. How strange. Do we have it on that? Yep, pump needs to be enabled there. Okay, because that would be really embarrassing if one site ran out of fuel and we lost the whole vehicle due to you know that kind of silliness. I have parachutes on the front of these boosters as well in the hope that we might be able to recover them. Uh, good luck with that, I think, is what I initially thought. But I looked at the price and it was worth giving it a go. So here, here's the staging. Stage time. And... There they go! Into pieces. Well, so much for that. It'll be 50 years before we figured that one out, I'm sure. And with those exterior boosters, we're using the RD-103 engines. This is using the Vanguard engine. The Vanguard engine has slightly higher specific impulses, has lower thrust though. But once it's going, it doesn't matter nearly so much. Also note, science being collected thanks to the power of uh, of the Science Alert plugin. Now, I wonder if I can configure that thing to instantly bring me out of time warp the moment science is visible, because <laughs> that's half my trouble, is that the science appears for a tiny fraction of a second. And by the time I see it, it has gone and I have to come around for another pass. Okay, see, upper stage now doesn't use those solid rocket boosters anymore because I figured out they were actually pointless and redundant since this thing is pressure-fed and seems to actually work pretty well. Um, now, 
this is the longest burn of the launch so far, or in fact in general this is the longest burn of the launch, this engine. We've lofted it up and it largely flies on a ballistic trajectory. We try to keep the time to apple apps from getting too low. Remember the higher it goes that we have to carry that fuel up there and we end up losing some advantage, we end up losing energy. So just try to keep it there and then when the time comes we want to pitch down and drop it onto the horizon and then fire those engines. It, we're going to do this just before the engine burns out because those solid, ro those solid rocket booster stages have no control, right? We have no control once this burns out. So instantly fires and instantly goes into orbit. So we're in orbit now. It's a question of how much high we can get. 3,000 kilometers, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000. Then that one is burned out. 10,000, 11, 12, 13, 14. 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, wow, we are way above geostationary orbit. That is fantastic. So the orbit is in fact over, it's like one day and a couple of hours. It's a 26 hour orbit. This is truly great. We, can't, we aren't going to stop, unfortunately, at geostationary orbit, but we are going to go high enough that we can collect some of this data. Oh, look. Data from another region, thanks to the power of science alert. From up here we can observe Earth like no one has seen it before. Spinning silently in a velvety dark blackness. Uh, although it does look rather naked since it doesn't have any clouds. Um, I really hope that gets fixed. Anyway, after a bit of research, we come up with a new manned capsule type vehicle. This is an evolution of the aircraft. It, uh, well, it basically is the same design as before, but we're missing a bunch of wings this time. We're using little winglets. The whole thing launches vertically, and it is much closer to a rocket than an aircraft, even though it is an aircraft uh, capsule, let's say. Now, we are aiming for 290 kilometers, that's what our contract is. First stage burns out at around 30, 40 kilometers, but we do not stage because at this point it is aerodynamically unstable. We have to wait until we're high enough that we can separate and keep everything under control. So about 60 kilometers, there we go. So that uh, XLR engine fires and starts pushing us upwards at about, it's just over 1G. So 230 kilometers, this is us, we just got to keep this straight, 240 and we're definitely free of the atmosphere by now, 250. Now the other side of this is we want to cut out the engines because we need that fuel. We're using this engine, we could use other engines, but we're very specifically using this engine because it's the only one that can be relit multiple times. 280, 290, and I'm just going to let it go to about 300 and then we'll kill that engine. Now the remaining fuel will be used to slow us down, so yeah, we get no missions, no telemetry or anything, but we have got contracts. Contracts, contracts, contracts. Now, I, I deliberately put these wings really high up because I want this thing to be stable in reverse. So while it's falling down through the atmosphere, I want the engines to be able to keep it, you know, slow it down, essentially. However, they're just at the right distance so that when that tank empties, the thing will flip the other way and become a regular aircraft. It's, it's stable in the correct direction. So we're moving at about 1500 meters per second and we want to shed as much of that velocity as possible. Or rather, we want to avoid picking up another 600 meters per second or so before we hit the atmosphere. That engine is slowing us down. The, deceler the, the acceleration is about 1.45. We're not going to be that much slower. In fact, we're going to hit the top of the atmosphere going about a kilometer per second faster than our previous mission here, right? This thing needs to slow us down as quickly as possible. And you know, to be fair, with a tank and all those fins, it shouldn't be too hard to have this thing 
not enter directly head first. That's the, that's the danger. If this thing goes head first, we could be in some serious trouble here. Reaction control system will hopefully keep us pointing the right way, and now we are starting to hit the top level of the atmosphere. Our speed is still dropping, but I think we will be very lucky if we get it below one kilometer per second. Yeah, that's not going to happen. 1,060... Yep, there we go. But 1,070 meters per second. And now... Now we got to hope that we maintain control for as long as possible. I'm keeping it in reverse because that's slightly... I don't know, it looks slightly less aerodynamic, but honestly, I don't know. I'd like it to go sideways, but I figure that this thing will probably flip and go head first if I let it go sideways. So I'm going to hold this position as long as possible. And then as it flips, we're going to encourage the flips because those oscillations will again, those tumbles will help keep this whole thing under control. Okay, we're up to about 1400 meters per second again. And at this point, stability control doesn't know quite what to do. And it's turning. Okay, it's turning, it's turning. Now try to keep this oscillation going. So I want the oscillation because of course, Every time you hit side on, you're decelerating, you're you're adding much more drag. So what is the speed doing? The speed is actually starting to slow down here, but I am stuck in a dive. I'm stuck in a dive. And I don't mean a dive bar. I, okay. The speed is slowing down, but I'm worried that I'm not going to get out of this. 1100. 900. Oh, wow. Look at the G-forces. He is being pushed eyeballs out. He's decelerating. And actually, yeah, yeah, totally, totally slowed down there. Oh, well. So much for my crazy plan. And I, is this thing going to fly? Did, what exploded there? Was that, uh, was that the rest of the spacecraft? No, surely not. That would have crashed a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, this thing flies relatively well. We can actually try flying over the space center with this before deploying the chute. Well, look at me rolling into a turn when in fact I have a rudder and a set of wings that are exactly the same. There, I'm gonna ditch this speed or bleed off this speed over the control center, over the Kerbal Space Center. And at the appropriate time, pull up into a climb, and then we stall, drop the parachutes, and come in for a nice landing on my very awesome little rocket here. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure landing on the rocket will void its warranty. But there we go, that is another contract which we can complete for cash in the downtime. We will probably do a few more of these, but I won't make you watch them. Anyway, we'll do some more in future episodes. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.